In this video, I am talking about vintage Soviet lens. 58 millimeter F2 Helios 44 and 4. My name is Pav and on this channel I review cameras and lenses, I talk about photography and video production and do a very occasional tutorial. So if this is your thing then please consider subscribing. Okay, you are here because of this, the Helios 44M4. Helios lenses are legendary for their swirly bokeh and are the most common vintage lenses that you can find. There is a reason for this. They have been produced in millions in 34 years from 1958 to 1992 and are very easy to find and cheap to buy on eBay. Helios lenses are in fact the most produced manual lenses of all time. This is M42 screw-on mount lens. Uh, Russians have actually made Helios lenses in M42 mount right to the end, even though M42 was made obsolete in 70s, or, or so I read. I have reviewed my favorite Helios 44 too, this one, a while ago, and I really do like that lens uh, for a lot of reasons, but I heard that 44 M4, this lens, is actually better. So, I got one, well, well I got two <laughs> to try. Firstly, it's not the same lens as 44-2. The build is significantly different. It's been adapted for Zenit cameras in the 80s to utilize their automatic aperture control. You could actually control the aperture of this lens via the camera and not just by the, the ring on the lens. But that functionality could be an issue for you for using this lens on modern cameras. As is, turning the aperture ring doesn't do anything at all. For it to work, the contact pin on the back of the, the lens has to be pressed. And, in, and then the, the aperture just works as normal. However, quite few modern M42 to whatever amount of camera you have adapters do not allow the pin to be pressed all the way in when the lens is screwed on and making it impossible to adjust the aperture manually by hand. I use these KNF concept adapters. There's some affiliate links below this video if you want to get one for, for your camera. And using those, I don't have any problem with this lens at all. But if you do with the adapter that you already have, there is a very simple fix and modification that you can do to permanently press the pin inside of the lens and make the aperture always work, regardless of the adapter. There's a link to a video showing how to do this below this, this video as well. Okay, let's talk about the performance and that legendary swirly bokeh. Let's face it, you don't get a wide aperture, fast prime like this, and not use it wide open. But with this, as with many of the cheap vintage lenses, the sharpness is not its strength. In fact, the images are only sharp right in the middle of the frame. And sometimes it is very difficult to get anything remotely sharp when composing using the rule of thirds and not placing your subject bang in the middle of the frame. But saying all that, this is what gives this lens its character. I had to work harder to achieve results I wanted, but it was absolutely worth it and fun to use. The images obviously get sharper when you close the aperture, but they never get ultra sharp. And with closing the aperture down, there is also a trade-off. The contrast and color literally go away at f8 or smaller apertures. There is this bluish purple tint visible on the images, and they took me ages to correct in post, but all that adds to experience using lens like this. Well, this lens. The biggest issue this lens has is the flaring. Well, the biggest after sharpness. Forget shooting towards the sun or any strong light source. The flaring is so strong that it will just obscure the image and it is literally uncontrollable. Avoid shooting towards strong light sources with it and then it's all good. The swirly bokeh is happening due to defect in design. Helios lenses, although they have evolved over the years, they all came from Russians copying Zeiss Biota lens. They didn't get it quite right. And by that, they created that somehow unique character a lot of people still buy and use this lens today. The lens is built extremely well. Photographic equipment in Soviet Russia was built like dairy tanks, solid, heavy, and made to last. And they certainly last 
decades. It is very easy to determine the age of most of these lenses. Not all, but the most common versions for sure. The year of production is the first two digits of the serial number. And I have uh, this one, one from 1983 and this one from 1989. It is fairly small, only five centimeters long, but it weighs 250 grams. All that metal and glass gives that very sturdy quality feel. Putting it on adapter will make it longer on your camera and the lens also extends when, when focusing. The focus ring has got fairly long way to travel from one end to the other and it is very firm to turn. Not ideal for smooth quick focus pulls when filming with it and the aperture ring is not the clicked. Aperture is actually very easy to, to turn and change as opposed to the focus ring which needs a bit of effort. Is that firm, very firm. Aperture closes from f2 to f16 and the minimum focusing distance is half a meter. Very neat little package. Conclusion, this lens is not perfect. Far from it. It is actually so bad that it makes it cool. Great for mastering your photography skills as you have to work harder to get desired results with it. But when you get it right, you will feel more proud of yourself and your photos. If you want sharp images every single time and reliable tool to be creative with, then this is not for you. There is so many other vintage lenses that are sharper than this, in my opinion. Even the Helios 44-2, this lens is actually a better lens overall than this. But there is a lot of these around and if you come across one of them cheap, don't let it go. Buy it. It does add this dreamy vintage cool look to the images and the videos shot with it. And even though it is hard to get sharp results with it, it is fun to play with. And this is it from me. If you like this video, then please give me the, the thumbs up. And if you're not subscribing already, then please consider clicking on that red button below and the bell button to get notifications of my future videos, which is, which is weekly. Thanks for watching and see you next time. If this is one Helios, these are three Helioses. Meh. Hey, that was an easy one. No outtakes. Take. Pretty much. <laughs>